Hey, Kevin here, top one to financial advisor, two-time author, one-time bestseller, and we are here to talk about the stock market and what a glorious day it is. I have no idea what happened in the stock market today, but I do have news about what happened this time last year. And all last year, if you have been here for a while, you know that I've been doing videos Monday through Friday for a consecutive year. Like there are more than 250 plus videos from 2020 to right now. And this time last year, we had the biggest drop, one of the biggest drops in history, 2,997 points. That was how far the Dow Jones dropped. I think it was like 12 or 13%. The S&P 500 was down, double digits. Everybody was panicking. And I got up here on Facebook, I went on Instagram, I eventually went over to YouTube, and I kept telling people, Twitter too, that those who were investing in 2020, those who were consistent, those who were calm, were going to be the ones that were going to build wealth in 2021 and 2022. Go back, check the tapes. At no point that said it was time to panic and sell. I said, eventually, the market will return, and it has, even though what, two of the last three or so weeks had been rocky. Now, I didn't know it was going to come back so quickly, but I got some numbers to share with you today. So I'm going uh, I'm to flip screens real quick and just, just throw out these numbers because, again, here, here's the thing. You may not see these numbers for a while, right? And I'm not here to say that the market is going to go up another 40% this year or, or Netflix is going to do this and that. We don't know. We do know that, and as we discuss here Monday through Friday, we talk about investing in quality stocks. We discuss interesting ETFs. We answer questions. So if you have questions and things you want me to cover, put those in comments. Um, and I'll, I'll get to a few of those at the end. But we know this. When you invest, you are taking advantage of time. You will not get 2020 back. Most of us don't want it back. <laughs> but you will not be able to say, look, I was going to go do this thing. I decided to do X, Y, and Z. Can I come back to and get that 2020 rate? Can I go back and get that 2020 investment return? It's gone. It's gone. If you were investing back in 2020, perfect. You've compounded that wealth, whether it was fractional shares or not. And now you can just roll it into 2021 and hopefully get to continue. But back then when the market was down, when it wasn't looking good, I said, that was the time. That was a time to either do nothing. You had two choices. I said, do nothing and chill or just continue to invest and, and mind your business. Right? So here are some of the returns back from this time last year, one year ago, March 16th, I think the market really bottomed out on the 17th. So I think if I moved it over one day, it would probably look even better. Um, but March 16th, 2020 to March 16th, 2021, I have it up here on my screen. If you just did an index fund, remember index funds hold pretty much everything. The one I'm comparing to is just, just the S&P 500. So the symbol SPY, again, that is SPY. They're just one of them, not all of them. And you own the top 500 companies. So company that pops in your head, it's probably the S&P 500. Um, so if you did that, did nothing else, you put money in it, you left it alone for a whole year, a whole year. You just left it alone and did nothing. You made 46%, 46% on your money by doing nothing with SPY. That's it. That's all you need to do. Most people have this type of investment inside of their 401k, usually a good chunk of their 401k, which is, again... Go back, check the tapes from a year ago. I had a whole lot of people saying, well, I want to pull out my 401k. I want to sell. I want to go to cash. I want to do all this stuff. You ain't need to do all that. Told y'all, stand still. You didn't want to withdraw, which is what people wanted to do. They would rather, when the market was its worst, they were looking to pull out, withdraw everything, pay those taxes, and sit in, in cash for God knows how long, when you could have just left it alone, rolled the storm out, and gotten your 46%. Now, why am I this confident? Uh, why was I this, this exact confidence level this time last year? Because we know time and time again that the market tends to go up. It's going to hit rocky patches. It happened in 2008. We were fine. It, it took 18 months, almost two years, felt like, right? But we were fine. Great Depression, terrible time to be invested. But we were fine. Like, we eventually worked through it. And time and time again, we, we start to see that. Dot-com crash, we worked through it. SARS, we worked through it. 
the list goes on. <laughs> the list goes on. We tend to work through these things. They always happen this fast, but we do know that they do happen. When you invest in quality companies or even just index funds, it's hard to lose with index fund number one, but if you got quality companies, people got to buy this stuff in some way, right? Even we said, look, you know, if you're not super confident in some of the other investments, here's some defensive stuff you can go to, like Dollar Generals and the Costco's. Those didn't do as well. They don't normally do 46%, but they didn't lose right? That's the, that was the whole point of talking about those and pivoting to those when things didn't look all that great. So again, going back, we've got SPY, uh, just a general S, uh, S&P 500 index fund, 46% return there. Netflix, a stock that I picked in January of, I guess it was 2020. So December 2019, January 2020, before this whole thing started, before we knew it was going to start, at least in the States, I said, guess what? Netflix is my top stock for that year, up 55% from one year ago today. You've got Amazon up 73%. All that stuff about Amazon is still up 73%. Wild, right? Uh, AMD, these are all stocks we've talked about before. I know someone asked about AMD. Um, AMD up 88.5% from this time last year. Then you got NVIDIA, which is a stock that's been on my watch list for a while. Uh, if you're inside the Investors Toolkit, which you should be, you know about, you know, it's about that one, um, up 120%. And then Tesla is up 500 and something percent. I actually took Tesla off the graph. I'm going to show you the graph now. Uh, but yeah, I just, I was like, let me just take this one off because it's, it's going to make everything else look like you ain't been doing nothing when you really have. Um, so let me share this with you here. And I'm going to add Tesla, you know, it just be, it just be blowing stuff out the water. And I, I hadn't, I actually did not have Tesla until later in the year. Uh, y'all yeah, know how I feel about it. Um, so 519% for Tesla. Now, it, you know, it's been falling off a little lately. But again, you're still up 519% if you were investing this time last year. So you, you see how it just flattens this out and makes it seem like this is not all that great. That's why I took it out. Because remember that the average, the average year in the stock market, if you're just gauging like just general average year, you take them, you match them together, you crunch the numbers, you're going to get somewhere between like 7 to 10% on average. So if you get 40 <laughs> in a single year, that's really good. If you get 120, you are killing the game. 500% just outrageous. Just It really don't make sense. Um, but hey, like this was a like time for you to do well. Now, that does not mean that 2021 is going to be the same. It's starting off kind of meh, but there are deals out there. Uh, I still think Disney is a very good company for right now. Um, it may be the, a good company for the next several years. It wasn't the last several years, but it is now and for the next several years. I think Disney is really good. Uh, I told you guys about Moderna. I think I got in at like 135 or so. I think it's going to hit 190 something here in the next few weeks. It's up to 150 something. And I don't mean you should jump into it. You want to do your research. I got me a stop loss and I got into a point where it can lose. I'm going to still make money. So I'm in a no lose position in Moderna right now. Now, again, they don't mean that you should just jump into it. Just research and look out there. Um, so those are just some of the ones that pop off, off my off the top of my head, including all the others that you already know of. I don't want to you know, beat a dead horse or whatever the phrase is nowadays. Um, but again, this is why you want to be patient. I did not come here to tell you that whatever we're talking about today is going to make you money today. Now, yes, some of it will, right? A Moderna, I told you guys when I jumped into it, it ain't been that long, maybe a week. Like I do some short-term stuff, I do some long-term stuff. But it's the long-term stuff is where the real money is. Long-term, long money, right? And it, it, it took a year, right, for us to get to this point and say, oh, yeah, that was a good idea to invest in, you know, Netflix. That was a good idea to invest in AMD. It was a good idea to invest in NVIDIA. Sometimes it takes time, but look how quickly it passed. If you were DCAing, dollar cost averaging, and putting in $20, $50, $100 a week, a month, whatever it is, you have seen some significant gains provided that you were investing in strong companies or strong funds. We talked about um, other index, uh, not other index funds, well, other ETFs yesterday. Check those out. But this is the time. Because a year from now, you're going to wish you started a year ago. I've been saying that for years as well, right? A year from now, in 2021, in 2022, 2023, you're going to wish that you had bought whatever company it is that, is that is available, right? We all said, myself included, Amazon is too high. Like, it, it, 
what it, Amazon is, is too high. It's too expensive now. NVIDIA, I don't want to pay that much for it. I think uh, Disney is overpriced. Well, guess what? Amazon is 70% more now than what it was a year ago. All that stuff always recalibrates. And that's it's a psychological trick sometimes that we play with ourselves because we say, well, this company is too expensive. I don't want it now. But then you turn around and buy it in 2021, 70% more than what you could have got it in 2020. You got to think about those things. Um, speaking of that, let me show um, or let me pull up Disney because I have no idea how much Disney is up between now and a year ago. I assume it's really big. I don't know. Uh, I'm just generally curious, right? Uh, so let's see real quick before we sign off today. And let's see. And this is Yahoo Finance, by the way, where you can do this kind of easy analysis. Here we go. Disney up 89% ridiculous uh i'm gonna clear out some of these just to give you guys a better look so the s&p 500 is in blue amazon is in red you got disney even beating amazon i mean disney it was the year for disney and disney plus especially because of lockdowns even though the parks were closed which is again crazy uh so what i'm gonna do um i'm gonna check my kids account make sure they got disney in it <laughs> <laughs> so I got Disney on public. Uh, it was one of the free stats that they give you when you sign up using the link. Feel free to use mine. Um, and you'll, you'll, they give you like, uh, I think nine choices. Disney was one of mine. So that's how I got back into Disney after not having it for several years. But again, this is your opportunity. Some people said Disney was super expensive a year ago and they didn't want to get into it. They said it was expensive in 2019. A lot of people, again, myself included, said Amazon was too expensive. We'll look at it now, right? It's, it's way more expensive. Do you want to pay 70% extra? Now, if things continue on the same route, this will, this recalibrate, right? If Amazon is still Amazon, which I think all of us think it will be, five years from now, two years from now, it's going to be better. I can't say it's going to be 70% better, but it should continue to grow. Like the market just tends to. So again, now is the right time to invest. I've answered this question like what feels like every month is now time to start investing. Yes. It depends on what you invest in, but now is always a time to invest. It always just depends on what you invest in because this time will not repeat. This time will not repeat. The market wasn't up 40 some odd percent in 2020. It wasn't up 40 odd percent uh, in 2019. And I, we have no idea what it's going to be this year, but good or bad investing. Now you're going to wish you started a year ago, year from now, you're going to wish you started one year ago. All right, I ain't told y'all before, I'm telling y'all again. So make sure you share the video, talk to you guys later. Make sure you click the link above. Make sure that you also follow me on public. Now, see y'all later.